All right, so right now we're going to clean a TFF. Okay. So to do this, all you have to do is take a bucket, mark the five liter mark on here, fill it up with uh, distilled water or clean tap water to that five liter mark. Then all I did was take a 50 ml falcon tube full of sodium hydroxide pellets and pour that in there and stir it around a little so it dissolves. It can take quite a long time to dissolve, like five to 15 minutes. Um, so, and agitation helps a lot with that dissolution. Then what I've done is I've already made up a bucket with the sodium hydroxide mix in it for five liters and I have my peristaltic pump set up over here. So what I want to do really quickly is just go through the peristaltic setup just one more time to make sure we really got it covered. All right, essentially the peristaltic setup is a loop. You've got a line that goes from your sample, in this case in the bucket, through up through the peristaltic pump. I've locked it down because I'm about to start pumping. If I wasn't about to start pumping very soon, I'd have this unlocked so I'm not just squeezing my tube for no reason. Through a pressure gauge here that tells me my back pressure when I apply it, down along into my, uh, into my TFF here, and then the return line that takes my sample back either into where my sample is uh, to concentrate it, or into the sink to just flush that liquid through. Also, I have a hose attached here to one of these red nipples that then allows my filtrate to go back into a sink or into a vessel if I want to collect it. it come, nice clean water, 100 kilodalton filtered water comes out of here, so it's really nice clean water. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I've got my delivery tube in the sodium hydroxide mix. I'll clamp down at my pump, I'm ready to roll, okay. At the moment, I don't have a clamp on this line, the return line, and I'm not delivering any back pressure right now. What I'll do to start off with is I'll start just flushing my, my sodium hydroxide through the lines without any back pressure, without sending it out through my filtrate line, because I just want to start it moving. All right, then we'll start applying back pressure. All right, the first thing to do is make sure your tube is actually in the sample water. If it's above it, all you'll have is a sucking noise. All right, and I'll demonstrate that right now. So. My peristaltic's turned on, I turn it on at the back. I've set it to 30, which is a, the lowest speed that this pump will give a very consistent flow rate at, um, which for our purposes is not super important. Um, then I'll turn it on. Notice also I've got it uh, pumping in the direction where it goes around like this, is drawing from this side, squeezing liquid through to this side over here. Okay, so I'll press start, and the peristaltic comes on. Okay, the first thing to note is with this dial all the way back, all the way unscrewed, I'm not actually getting any liquid coming through. What I want to do now is I want to just tighten that down, turning in a clockwise manner, so that I can start to see the sample being drawn up through my line. Because I don't want to over pressurize. This, this here squeezes, is, gives the intensity of squeezing. Okay. So, once it kicks in, you see my tubing starts to jiggle a lot more. All right, and I'm starting to get liquid come through. Turn it down just a little. Okay, so it's squeezing liquid through, and I can see liquid is coming out of my return line quite a lot here. Okay, so it's moving liquid through really nicely now. All right, let's just turn it down a little bit. All right, so it's going nice and slow and steady. Now, see, if you look at my return at my pressure gauge here, I don't have any pressure on this right now. Okay, what I want to do to get back pressure on this is I want to apply a clamp. Just a little clamp like this. Just put it, loosen it off, slide it onto the return line. And then what I do is, watching my pressure gauge over here, I start to apply a little, start to twist down that pressure. What you'll notice is nothing will happen, nothing will happen, and then all of a sudden it's gonna shoot up. All right, see how? I don't know if you can see how it's shooting up. It's getting up to around five uh, PSI right now. So I want to keep it around between five and 10. And I'm going to start getting liquid come through into this line. What I'll do is I'll put this here so you can see it nice and clear. All right, so at five PSI, what we can notice is that my peristaltic uh, is applying pressure. Um, sorry, the uh, TFF is filling up with liquid here. I like to hold our own angle so that I can see if any bubbles start to push through. Like this little bubble down here. And just tap it gently, and those bubbles should start coming out. 
there's any flow. That's just a really nice clear indication everything's working well. Alright, next you can see we're starting to get liquid collecting in the beaker here. I don't have very much pressure on there, so maybe I'll just add a little bit more. And that'll start increasing the rate of flow of filtrate. Okay. So everything's going well. If I want, I can also fine tune the pressure by changing the speed at which I push water through with the first open. If I increase it from 20 RPM here, I go from about 6 PSI up to around about 9, just by increasing it up to 26. Okay. Now you should see an increasing amount of filtrate come through as well. See how it's coming through a lot more nicely now? We're at a higher pressure, we're going faster. The idea then, make sure you never go over 10. Yes, sir. Okay. So now what we're doing essentially is we've got our bleach, uh, our sodium hydroxide solution in here, and what we're doing is we're running it through the line and we're concentrating it by drawing off filtrate here. So what we want to do is we just want to run this until pretty much all of this bleach solution is gone. That means it's gone through the lines, it's cleaned everything by flowing through, as well as it's being pushed through the TFF here and out the line, so we've cleaned the filter as well. Okay. So usually that takes around about 30 minutes just to run through. So just keep an eye on that. You don't have to be here the whole time. All right. Um, watch out though for these tubes coming out of the pump, and this is the sound you'll hear. Hear the sucking noise? That means that you've run, uh, you're out of solution, or your tube has come out. Then the quickest way you can get that air out of the out of the lines is actually to take off all the back pressure, and it'll just flush that air straight out of the system very very quickly. If you leave back pressure on, it'll get out eventually. But I find it's much much faster just to let the line return. To how what it was doing. Okay, let me just slide this back on. Nice and easy like that. Okay. Alright, so let's just pretend for a second that we've flushed, we've, we've dropped this sodium hydroxide solution down to there's almost nothing in here. The next step then is you stop the peristaltic pump. You take your lines out, then you so we have either no liquid or very little liquid in this bucket here. Getting a new bucket, never ever use the same bucket that you use for the sodium hydroxide liquid uh, solution for your DI rinse, which is going to flush all that out. If you don't change buckets, then what you'll find is that your pH will never drop, and the pH is our indicator that the bucket, that the, uh, the sodium hydroxide can flush that one. Okay, next thing you need to do is fill up the bucket with more tap water. Right. What you then need to do is taking your delivery line, put it uh, after you've drained, you can drain all the liquid out of the delivery line by running it with nothing coming out. So now it's empty. I can put it back into my, my rinse bucket, but I put my return line into the sink. I don't want to flush bleach out of the line back into my rinse bucket. All right, so now what I have here is I have some enough liquid in there I can start pumping. I'll start my peristaltic again and I'll start putting just DI back through the line. Okay, and you can hear all that air. Okay, so what I want to check again is I want to check that my pressure is not over 10. Right now you can see it's actually quite low because there's still air in the line. And I want to check as well that I'm getting some flow through my filtrate line. Right. And I'm also sending a lot of liquid from this bucket out of my return line. See how much is coming out here? Now, what's going to happen is, if I don't s supply constant flow of water to my rinse bucket here, it's going to drop down. And we actually need a lot of volume to go through here to get all that sodium hydroxide out. So usually what I do is I put uh, my hose from my DI supply into the bucket, I leave it in there, I let the bucket fill up, and then as soon as it fills up, you know how much you can back off your DI supply so you're not just overflowing it all the time. Okay. Then what I do is I usually clamp my lines in, both the DI line and the pump line, the delivery line, 
and then I just let it run for a really long time. This can take like 45 minutes or more. Alright, so see how I'm up to the top now. That's kind of, so now I'll just back up a little. And that will enable me not to waste the eye just by pouring it everywhere. And it means I'll keep my bucket full but not overflowing at all times. Alright. Now you can see everything's working well. I've got just under 5 psi. I might want to tighten that up a little. But I am getting a fair amount of flow here. You can see I've got 400 mils in such a short time out of my filtrate line. Alright, um, so now all I do is leave this for a little while. Now, what you want to do to test that your, Paris, that your uh, TFF is clean, I'll stop this for a second, is you want to test the pH of what's coming out of the filtrate line as well as what's coming out of your return line over here. To do that, all you do is you take some pH paper and because we don't care which line is, uh, you have everything has to return to seven, pH of 7. Because we don't care whether the filtrate is out or whether the return line is out, in the field what I usually do to save pH paper is I actually di uh, hold it under both flows, just one strip under both flows, and if one of them's out it'll tell me that. If that's true then I just have to add uh, keep flushing until it's out. Okay. All right, so we'll start the process up again. Do, do, do. Now, what I'm going to do, because I'm in the lab, I'll do one, one pH strip per thing. All right. Okay. So we can tell already. We're looking pretty good. Now, when that returns to the right pH, which in this case it, it's seven, you can stop everything, unload the peristaltic so you're not just squeezing your pipe but for no reason, and then we want to break it down. If you're going to then do a sample immediately afterward, just leave it set up as it is. But because I'm not going to use this for a while, I'm going to break it down right now. Okay, the way to do that is... First of all, I take the tubing off each end of the, pair of the, the TFF. Okay, so what I want to do... I leave that. So see how I, can, I have a leak here? I can tell because the bench is wet after I dried it. I'm going to take this guy off, put it in the sink. Then I'm also going to take this off. So what I want to do is I want to unscrew the clamp that's holding everything together and be prepared for this to kick off because of this line here. Okay, so that comes off. Easy, a little bit of water comes out. Usually, I then try and keep the tubing elevated so it doesn't just pour all over everything. I put the cap back on. And then I redo the plant. That is nice and sealed now. I've got this not sealed. I just want to change this end out now. Undo the clamp again. Let the two in just flop off. Take the clamp off. Leave the tubing on. Uh, sorry, the, the the rubber seal on. And then reassemble. Now, what I have right now is I have the ends have been put back together, really nice. I have one red nipple that's been that has remained sealed through the whole time, and I have one end that has nothing in it. 
Now, because I know this is all nice, neutral pH um, DI water, what I do is I get rid of the excess liquid in here because I don't want to have this full the whole time just by shaking and little jets of liquid come out of that unsealed nipple. So just sort of gently shaking it down. I check when I get it down to around this level. I'll stop. Okay, so I got it down to around there. I put the red nipple back on and then I put a zip tie around this so it stays nice and sealed and I can tell that this TFF is good to go because see that water level in there? That means it's still nice and wet. Okay. Alright, and that's it. The TFF is now clean. Um, you can just break down the tubing. Usually what I do is try and let it drain by holding the tubing up and then I hang it up somewhere. Do that for all three lines. Make sure you take the clamp off or else you'll squish the tube for no reason. Okay, that's that. If I want to use my peristaltic again soon, I'll leave the pump head on, otherwise I'll take that off. And that's it, that's how you clean TFF.